Welcome to my video on uh, cast net repair. Uh, if you followed uh, the previous videos and you've been successful in making a cast net, or if you know how to make cast nets or other things, then you have a pretty good idea on uh, how knotted webbing is. Not, it's called a knotted net because there's knots in the net. So we're gonna start out, we're gonna look at the braille lines. Let's assume we're going to do a braille line repair. Let's assume that you're using your cast net on a fishing trip and you break one of the braille lines. You're going to need to repair that pretty soon if you can uh, because it's frustrating to use a cast net that has a broken braille line or a couple of broken braille lines. So what's going to happen with the braille line oftentimes whenever you're fishing with it after the line breaks is it's going to ball up around the the other braille lines that are in place and it'll start obstructing them so that they don't open up properly so your net will actually start messing up in the way that it's casting and stuff like that so we're going to assume that you broke a braille line and the first thing you need to do is go up inside the net i've got the net uh, inside out this is the part that fishes and the other side is the part that, that's on the top and what you're going to do is you're going to come in here and you're going to straighten this braille line. You're going to find out where it's attached here and you're going to pull it. You're going to pull this line out of this of here. You're going to untangle everything and get it nice and straight. Now, I've used this as a demonstration. And what I'm going to do is assume that we have now straightened that braille line from here and we're going to take it to the break point. And I'm going to use my mock-up so that you can see exactly what I'm doing and you fully understand how you're going to go about making this repair. Okay, here we are on the mock-up. Uh, what I've done is I've taken the same size line that you would have in your net. If you made your net, then uh, you're going to have, see I use number 18 and I recommend you use the number 18 uh, bonded green uh, twine for your braille lines on a handmade cast net. And we're going to assume that's what you're going to use. So you, you should have uh, materials left over from you making the net from that uh, spool of twine. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the part that comes from the swivel, the very top part of your, uh, your cast net on your braille lines. We're going to take and we're going to lay these side by side like this. If you remember in the adding braille line section to your uh, cast net on my previous videos. We're going to do the exact same thing as we did right here to attach it to the lead line or the foot line, if you will. Take your extra, what, what we've done is we've cut a short piece that's plenty long to do our knots as well as come down here and, and reconnect it to the lead line or foot line. We're going to take this the, the new piece of twine, and we're going to go to the old braille line. We're going to get plenty of left over here. We're going to come over here, and we're going to do the exact same knot that we did over there. We're going to put the loop. We're going to wrap toward where we're going to do the other knot. Wrap this direction. Push this through. Go around twice and push this through. Okay. Tighten this up. Make it plenty tight. Okay, now we're gonna do the exact same thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, we're gonna turn it around like so. We're gonna do the same thing here. I always wrap away from myself. That's why I've turned it completely around. And I'm going to wrap away from myself, but I'm gonna to wrap toward the previous knot. Around this way, and then push this through. It doesn't matter anywhere on the braille line where it broke. It could break up toward the top. Uh, oftentimes they'll break down here. But what you need to do is you need to have enough line to be able to extend it long enough to retie to the to the uh, lead line. Now that you've got both of them together, like oops, sorry, you got both of them together. We're going to pull these together, and we're going to pull them real tight, snug them up. Now you can come in here after you've snug it up and you can trim this off, but I would recommend that if you're gonna uh, put a little bit of the dipping material on here to help uh, actually protect it from a little more abrasion and secure your knots a little better, uh, just just hold off on the trimming of this. You can trim those a little later and once you, once you dip it, 
and you can trim them really, really close and they're not gonna come loose. Now, at this point, what we've done is we've made our braille line long enough so that we can use it here, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this old one off, but we're gonna put it back in the exact same place. We're gonna cut the other one off. Gotta use caution here so that you don't, uh, you don't cut your, your lead line itself. We're gonna cut this out, okay? So now, we're gonna push this through the net like we did before. We're just gonna push it through the net so we don't lose its position. And then we're gonna take it and we're gonna stand the net up. And we're gonna suspend the net so that the lead line's hanging. And it, you can see exactly how your, uh, your, your braille line's gonna be. And it's gonna be on the mark, okay? So let's assume we've done that. Now we're on the inside, we've pulled this out, we, we're here. We're gonna push this through where it's supposed to go through. We're gonna pull it to its proper length. Okay, we're gonna pull it to its proper length and we're gonna do the same thing we did when we added these. We're gonna take this, we're gonna take this twine, we're gonna wrap away from ourselves here like so. Of course, you're gonna put your little black mark on there the same way that you did before so that you know where this, this line is supposed to sit. Okay. Uh, it just makes life so much easier, okay? So we had a little extra line there, so we're gonna have a little extra tail here. We're gonna get this and we're gonna tighten this up, and then we're gonna pull it back down on here, and we can trim this off here. And what you've done is you have like, it's like a barrel nut, it's a double fisherman's right here, double fisherman's knot. Uh, it's just like a barrel, and it's, it's really clean and it's really smooth, so it won't hang up in your webbing. So you'll cut these off after you uh, either take a paintbrush and, and dip this or go ahead and re-dip your net. If, you're, if you have other repairs that you had to do, you'll go ahead and dip your net at this point. So you can trim these off and you'll trim this off and then go ahead and dip your net if you want or, or wait to trim these off after you've dipped your net. I hope this repair helps. Uh, this will work in monofilament. It'll work in uh, your nylon. So all the repairs that we're doing in this video here, you'll be able to do that uh, whether it's a, a monofilament net or a nylon net. Okay, let's take a minute and look at the way uh, that the, the webbing is made. Uh, if you notice here, these are this is a sheet bend. That's a sheet bend here, okay? So when the sheet bend is tied in the webbing, if you do a pull sideways, it's gonna cause it to pull and slide down itself, and then it's gonna move its position as to where it's resting. So anytime you make repairs, you wanna make repairs this way. So this is the bottom or the top, and this is the bottom or the top. It depends on, on which way this is hung. So water flow is this way on the webbing, or water flow is this way on the webbing. Here we have a lead line or a foot line. It's called a foot line or a lead line. Now, the webbing, when it's pulled, it's pulled in that direction so that your sheet bend is receiving the pressure that it needs to receive uh, to, to properly get that pull, okay? And it won't distort the webbing. If you have, if you, you mounted this sideways on your lead line or your cork line or from your thimble to your lead line, uh, it's it's going to really distort it real bad. It's going to create a problem. Now, the unique part about the Flying Dutchman in, in my previous videos, I'm showing the Flying Dutchman technique and tying these knots. If you notice, when this knot lays flat, there's a twist right there. Every single one of them do that. It puts a twist in there. And as you can see, it's going to act semi, somewhat like a, like a spring to help close that webbing. That webbing wants to close itself back up. So when you use this in a cast net and you cast it, uh, it wants to close itself and make the mesh smaller than it actually is. So it, there's a real big advantage. And this is one of the things that uh, uh, one of the uh, commercial manufacturers of, of netting, uh, when he saw this webbing, he, he immediately saw that between the knots, they rolled half a turn. Every one of them rolled half a turn. And this is why he asked 
where on earth did I get my webbing? And I told him I made it. And like I say, I had to show him because he had to see the way that this was made because he's never seen webbing that's made this way. But with the Flying Dutchman, no matter what, it puts that small flip on there. So it actually puts the flip, puts a flip on the knot. It doesn't degrade it. It actually improves the quality of the webbing. And that's why he was so interested in it. Uh, because if your water pressure is lower, like there, like it is on a cast net, the Flying Dutchman is is an optimal system to use when you're tying this this sheet bin in place in your netting. So uh, one of the things that I've noted that people say that you can't make the uh, netting repairs using the Flying Dutchman. Well, I'm going to show you you can and you're gonna get the same results as you got when you actually manufactured your net. You made your own netting. So this will show you that you're gonna be able to do the same thing, not on every single knot that you're tying in your repairs, but nonetheless, you'll be able to do that. Okay, we're gonna do the uh, sim pretty much simplest of the repairs. Uh, let's say you pulled your net up. Let's go down here. Say so you pulled your net up and you noticed maybe even after you get home, you notice that you've got a hole in your net. You notice how big that is. That looks like a huge hole and all it is is one single leg that's broken. So what we wanna do is get your needle, get some twine on it. When you pick up your mesh, it's gonna have a V right there. That V, that V right there will help you hold your twine, stick it in the V and just pin it down like so, okay? Throw this over the same way you're doing when you, when you made your webbing. Pull this around this way. Now, manufacturers, when they make nets with uh, machines now, uh, this is what they use. They use the sheet bin. You'll see a number of different ways that it's tied, uh, and, but the normal repairs and, and building of nets you're going to use the sheet bin. Now, when you come over to this one, you're going to put it in the other V that way. And you're going to make the leg approximately the same length. Just take it and pinch it in the V. Put your loop around this way and come in this way. And what's going to happen is, is the line's going to come out that way whenever we tie it off. Okay. So we're going to snug this up like so, and what you've done is you've put a sheet bin right behind this sheet bin here, and you've put a sheet bin directly behind that sheet bin there. It's the same knot. Okay, so now you've performed your, uh, your repair there, and it will fish the way that it did before, and that's pretty much the simplest of repairs. Uh, if you notice the line the line's not coming out in the exact same spot as it would normally. Uh, and so the, the mesh has a tendency to be a little distorted. Okay. You, what you'll do is you'll just trim this, just trim this off. And then when you dip it, you can actually, if you want to, you can throw another half hitch on one of the, one of the legs down here. Uh, and what I mean by that is, is you can throw another half hitch down here. There, there's a number of ways to do your knots on here, uh, but the most common, you know, like I'm in the Texas Gulf Coast, the most common is just to do a sheet bin on it. And then you can take, you can put a double on there if you want, put another half hitch on there and then just trim it off like so. Looks messy, but uh, nonetheless, it's a repair. And then when you dip it, if you wanna go back and trim off this little little excess uh, twine, you can do that as well. Okay, we've looked at uh, the pretty much the simplest of repairs, and I've taken it back apart, so now we've discovered a hole here. Now, if we discover a hole like this, now we've got, we've got the side involved here, and that's, that's, the hole even gets larger. Okay, so in this case, uh, we don't really have to cut any twine or cut any, any bad webbing out of here. This pretty much uh, has the cuts in it the way we want. One thing we always want to remember 
when we're looking at this or what we want to achieve. If you notice here when we did this repair, you have a leg here and a leg here. And you can simply tile across leg to leg. That's what every repair has to have, a starting leg and an ending leg. In this case, it was a starting leg, ending leg. In this case, it's starting leg and then an ending leg. Okay, so we're gonna go from here, we're gonna tie across to here, and then we're gonna go down here, and we're gonna close this, this, this fairly large hole. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing we did before. We're gonna drop this in the V. Throw your loop over. Bring this down. Okay, this is this side one, because of the way the sheet bin is, is tied in here, we can't take this, we can't take this apart and get rid of all this loose, loose material. It has to stay. Now, if we have two legs over here that are loose, because of the the the, the way the knot's configured, as I had showed in the first part, the way the knot's configured, this is a loop that comes down and this is a loop that comes over. Okay, so if we cut the bottom here, then we'd be able to take this extra uh, knot out of here so that it's not even the, in the system, playing into the system anymore. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here. We're gonna pick this up like so. We're gonna bring these two knots together here. We're gonna take this knot and roll it over our twine like so. Pull it snug, okay? So you're holding on to it snug so it won't move on you. Take and put your loop over, go down, go over, grab this here, make sure everything's nice and straight, and you're gonna tie this, and it's gonna wrap itself around that knot, okay? Pull it tight. So now what we've done is we've done the same thing in a little different fashion by going from here to here. We've picked up that knot and we've tied it there. So what we're doing is we're trying to safeguard that knot there that was already there originally, because if it comes loose, it's gonna just come completely loose. Okay, so we're trying to safeguard it by wrapping it in a, in a knot. And then we're gonna come down, we're gonna pick up through here. We're gonna go this way. We're gonna get the correct amount of distance on this leg as we have here. We're gonna do it like this, and we're gonna come across here this way. And then pull this back across this way. It's kind of tough to do with the camera all up in my face. I guess I complain about that too much. Anyway, okay, so we're gonna snug that down, okay? And anytime I make repairs, I always dip my net directly after before I ever use it, and that way all of this stuff is locked in and it's not gonna be coming loose on me, so I can trim that off, okay? So now we've made a, a, a two-way repair there, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move over a little bit and I'm gonna go, instead of going this way going down I'm gonna go this way and come across okay so here in this piece we've got this piece here say that's broken okay now instead of going here like I did on this one we're gonna go here okay so looking at the principle of making sure that we have a starting leg and an ending leg here's our starting leg here's our ending leg so because of the way we tied the webbing and the, the pressure on the webbing is this way or this way, we can come over here and we can remove this. We can remove this knot right here. So it obstructs us less and we don't add any extra knotting in there. The, 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 the knot that we put in there becomes just like the original knot. Okay, we're gonna start on the starting leg and we're always gonna try to tie from left to right in, in our repairs when we start. You don't have to, you can go, you can go either way, but you know, to me it's always been just so much easier just to try to try to start and go left to right. Same kind of the way that we read. Okay, so we're gonna pull that down. Now on the next one, we're gonna reach under, we're gonna pick it up. We're gonna bring it up, okay? We're gonna make that leg approximately the same length. By, by, by drawing this down, we're able to get approximate same length. We're gonna grab a hold of that, 
bring our loop over, bring our webbing over, I mean our needle over, bring that down. And what we've done is we've put the same type of knot in here that's used right here. It's the same knot. Right here and right there, it's the same knot. Now, we're gonna go up here, we're gonna go underneath, pull up through, we're gonna come down here. We're gonna bring it down to the same length. We get everything aligned up. We're gonna grab a hold of this, hold it in place. While we perform this action, we're gonna pull down and pull tight, okay? So now, we've done a repair that direction in our webbing. And this looks like it was never damaged where you have just the two, the, the two legs that started and ended it. And so the knot we put in there is like the rest. Okay, so now we've got that in place. We're gonna remove the, the needle from it. And then before we use our net, we're gonna go ahead and redip it. Okay, so, so that is the repair that we just performed right there. All this stuff can be trimmed away some people actually take it and trim it pretty short and then use a lighter to burn it. But I have to warn you on a cast net where you're using number four, you got to be real careful with that lighter. You got to protect that knot and, you know, you, you run a risk of burning yourself in doing that. If you decide to go that route, just make sure that you don't uh, uh, hit your webbing legs with the flame or uh, burn the knot. You just melt it just a little bit and push it back. Uh, it's not really necessary if you're going to dip it. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead and get in here and I'm going to I'm going to just cut a whole bunch of this stuff out, and we'll just rebuild it. Just take all this junk out of here. Uh, I'm not I'm not cutting in any particular order right now. I'm just just cutting a bunch, and it'll be kind of like one of those situations that you run into whenever your whenever your net's been damaged from using it. And we'll just we'll just fix it. I'll show you how to fix that real quick. Okay, I almost I almost made it perfect. So let's just say this is this is tattered. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this. Okay, if you notice, I said that you needed a starting leg and an ending leg. Okay, so we got a leg here, we got a leg here, leg, 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 um, leg. So what we want to do is we want to say, okay, we've got a starting leg here. We've got these, and we've got a, a leg here. So if we cut right here, we'll be able to go from here with our needle attached. We'll be able to go from here down to here, pick that up, and then possibly go back. So let's go ahead and trim it right there. What we're going to do is, is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at making what's called a regular, this would be a regular repair, there's two types. There's regular and irregular. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just clean that up just a little bit. So as we look at this, we're able to go from here, loop, 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 drop down, grab the side. Okay, so I'm gonna cut right here, and that's gonna give me what another side. So that means when I come here, I'm gonna have to loop, loop, loop and I go right here and I can cut this. Okay, so I got my starting leg, and this is an ending leg, but we don't want that ending leg because we've got all this other stuff at the bottom. So we're gonna cut here. Okay, now we're gonna have to, when we come back, we're gonna get, we're gonna lock into the side of this, so we need to come down. So this is kinda in the way right here, so if we come down from here, staying in the, the sequence of the mesh, will go right here. So what I want to do is be able to come from here and then pick up this as a as a loop or a mesh. So I'm going to cut that. Then I'm going to be able to go here and I'm going to go from here to here, up, down, up, and then we've got this mess over here. So let's go ahead and trim this. Take this off. Okay, so we've got a we've got an ending leg here. So this is this is not this wouldn't be considered a a uh, a, a regular. This would be considered an irregular because we go here, 
We make a loop, 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 drop down, loop, 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 drop down, pick up, loop, go up to the loop, pick up, pick up the other one, make a loop, come here, drop down, and then end up right here. So what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and drop down once more so that we'll end up with a leg right here. This will work because we've got a starting leg and an ending leg. If you're, if you're following me here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take this off. We're going to take both of these off. And this one. Okay, so as you can see now, we've got what you would consider a regular patch. Uh, where we're going to patch this. We've got a starting leg here. We're going to loop, 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 drop. Loop, 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 drop. Loop. Okay, we're gonna, we'll, we'll be able to make these loops drop and then connect into here. Now, our knot flow is this way. In other words, the pull that we're gonna normally have on our knots is this direction. So we're able to take this knot out, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. We can't take out the, the three side ones. We have to leave those in place. I'm gonna take them out and come right back. Okay, I've taken them out, so now they're clean. They, they don't have that extra webbing in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to reach in here, and we're going to tie this off. This is how we're going to start. We're going to start at our starting leg. We're going to put our sheet bin in there. Pull it snug. Okay. So... How can we do the Flying Dutchman using this? Well, one of the things you have to do is you have to make sure that the, whatever gauge you're going to use is the correct gauge for the webbing. So when you remove this knot, when both knots line up on here, then it's the correct size gauge. And I'm pretty confident that this is the right size gauge. And it is. It's the right size, right size gauge. So I can actually come in here and... I can grab this like this for my Flying Dutchman, and I can do it this way. I'm trying to clear the camera. Okay. I can come in here like this. I can pull this up. I'm going to make sure that these knots come together, and I'm going to bring them together here. Okay. I'm going to pull this down. Okay. I'm going to come over here. Come here, come here. Okay, now I'm on the side, so I'm gonna have to go on the side. So I just put three new mesh in there. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna pull these down to where the knots line up. I'm gonna put this under the knot. I'm going to take this, put my loop over, come here, make sure all that clears because I want to wrap that knot up with the new knot that I'm putting in there. I want to secure it tightly. Okay. At this point, what you would do is you could flip your net over. By flipping your net over, we're going to go from right to left by flipping the net over. So I'll flip the net over real quick. Okay, I've flipped over the net, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in here with my Flying Dutchman. I'm going to use that Flying Dutchman technique, and I'm going to pull these knots down to where they're, they're going to become even, just like so. I'm going to get everything tight, and I'm going to bring my Flying Dutchman technique knot down. Still making the sheet bin. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back. Okay. Now I'm at the end of the, the mesh here where I'm able to do this. Okay. So I'm going to hit the side again right here. So I'm going to pick this up, put the twine under it, pull it snug.
Make sure the knot grabs around everything that's there. I want to make sure that I secure it real nice and well. Okay. So now I'm going to come back. I need to go ahead and come back again. When I come here, then I'm going to drop down and I'm going to pick these up. Go up here. Come back here. Go here. Go here. And then I'll end up here. I'll end up right here. This is the end. So I'm going to flip the net again so that I can move from left to right. Okay, I flipped the net again and it's back the other way. We're going to go from left to right. I'm going to set up for my Flying Dutchman. We'll bring these so that the knots are equal. They're even there. And bring it down. Bring it down. Bring it down. Okay, so we've done all of those loops that we can do, all those mesh. So now we're going to drop down. Uh-oh. So we just created another problem because that knot came undone. So we're going to do a repair within the repair. So I'm going to just cut this. And it's what it's going to do is it's actually going to extend. It's going to extend my reach here. So I'm going to go a little further on that one. So now what I've done is I've put another, another mesh area there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the next one. Then I'm going to drop down again. But I'm going to pull this out. <clears throat> and do the Flying Dutchman. Okay, so we're gonna come over here and we're gonna pick this up. Put it under put the twine underneath. Put the knot over the top. Bring this down. Secure it. Okay, let me take this off. Now what we're gonna do is this last portion. Because, because we're here. We need to go from here to here and then go back up here. So what we're going to do is we're going to come from underneath. We're going to pull this up to where the knots would align about the same size. Bring this over here and go like so. Okay. Come underneath. Put pressure down here so that you're creating the same mesh, the same mesh size. Grab it here. You don't want to over pull it because if you over pull it, you make this leg too short. So just grab it and get the right length. Okay. So now we have to come down again. We have to pick this up. I'm going to pick this up. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to get our pressures right. Get our legs the right length. Okay, so do it again. Oftentimes, you see I'm getting that twist in it also because normally what you would do when you're patching a machine manufactured webbing is on the top you would come here when you're when you're going this direction you would come from underneath but when you're traveling from left or from right to left you would always go downward in the mesh but because I'm doing the flying dutchman I'm doing them kind of the opposite now the end result doesn't matter as much if I come up underneath here and do it it's going to be perfectly fine 
but to make webbing the way that the webbing lays and the way that it's manufactured, then go in the direction to which the manufacturer did it is the direction that you're gonna, you're gonna probably want to do, but it actually does not matter. So we've getting these knots correct in the same length. So we just went from the top, we're gonna come to the bottom. We're gonna do the same thing. Make sure we put a little pressure down here on our net so that as we pull, we can get these knots about the same, the same length. We wanna to try to get them equal across that way as well. So you can pretty much eyeball this. This is the one area that you can't really use your Flying Dutchman here. The Flying Dutchman technique. Even though you're using the same knot, it's the same. Okay, we're gonna pick up this down. See, we're going up and down, up and down to get everything the way we need it to be. Okay, we get everything lined up, everything fairly equal in all areas. Go ahead and pinch it and lock it into position, and then go ahead and put in your knot. Pull it down and secure it, okay? Same thing again. Get these as equal as possible. Take this and pull it down. Okay, now this is the ending leg. So now we're gonna come over here under the ending leg. We're gonna come up, we wanna make sure that we make this leg about right. We, we can see that we're, we're a little bit off, okay? But nonetheless, if you can look at the patch right now, the patch is pretty decent. It's a little, little bit longer here because I'm not using the Flying Dutchman technique with a gauge. I'm actually just eyeballing it and getting it as close as I can. And what this does is it's still gonna allow your net to work perfectly. Get everything to where you're comfortable with it and secure the knot. Okay, there's that. Okay, so here's your patch. This looks a little messy, but when you dip it, that kind of will go away because the dip will kind of cause that to pull back together a little bit and kind of cause it to bunch up a little bit. This one here will fray out a little bit. So we'll take and we'll cut a little bit of that off. And so, so there's your patch. So I made these a little bit longer than they needed to be. They needed to be a little bit shorter, but that's, uh, I haven't patched in a while. So it's, it's all based on, on how much you do it and how much you put into it. But if you notice where we start, you know, up here, it looks like the original netting. The only place that I would made any kind of error is like on these two or three mesh right here. So uh, it's, a clean, it's a clean patch and it's called a regular, it's called a regular repair. It's not an irregular because we did a uh, rectangle here when we did it, we did a rectangle. So it all looks good. It's all, it's all gonna fish properly. Okay, on the next one, I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna do an irregular uh, over here where we have wideners. So if, if you have a hole where a widener is, it's really, really important that you pay attention to that hole and you pay attention to where you have to put a widener in there. Okay, I'll show you real quick a, uh, one of the best ways to secure the top of your net as you're working on it. Uh, most professional net menders or net builders, they always use nails. You can cut the tops of these off, but it's safer just to leave the top on. They'll normally drive nails in a piece of wood and they'll be able to hang their webbing on there. And by hanging their webbing, they're able to pull and get a direct pull on the webbing so that it pulls directly down so that they can secure all their knots and stuff like that properly and in, and in the best order that they can. Now, let's assume here that you have found this in your net. It's a, it's a big hole here, 
whole handle fit through there. And that means a lot of your bait can get out of that hole pretty fast because when it hits the water, it's gonna be like a, a ray of sunshine to that fish and he's gonna go straight to it. So what we wanna do is we want to trim this out. Now you notice we have a widener that's involved in this patch. Okay, so what we wanna do is get our starting leg. So we've got a starting leg here. We're gonna come here and then I'm gonna take this out Okay, one of the things I can do is I can just kind of leave it there to remind me and I can cut it out a little later. That's just a little reminder if I want it. Come over here and I can cut here. Okay, I can cut here. So now I've got, I can go from here, here, put in a widener, come here, drop down, pick this up. Okay, so we got another we got another leg here, and we have a leg right here at our widener. Okay, so because this widener is in the position it's in, we, can, we have a number of options we can explore. We can come down and we can cut until we get down to this widener, and we can go ahead and make the patch in there. But one of the things that uh, we want to consider is making this as user friendly as we possibly can. Okay, so we can come across here because this this is always going to create a little bit of confusion. Okay, so we can just go ahead and just don't worry about it initially. And we can come over here and we can cut this. Just cut it out. Okay. So we know we're going to come from here and we're going to drop to here. So we took that leg out, so here's a leg here. So whenever we're tying this, we can kind of move that spacer or widener over, and this is what we have. So when we get down to here, we'll, we'll have to figure out exactly how we're gonna execute this. Now, because our webbing is this tied in, in this manner, we can take out a few of these knots. As soon as I get them taken out, I'll come right back. Okay, here we go, okay. We have, I've removed these here. Here's another one that I can remove right there. I failed to remove it. Okay, so that gives us clean mesh. It's the, the patch will look a lot more professional doing it this way. So we have a starting leg here. We'll go up and then we'll make a loop. We'll make a spacer or a widener. Make a loop, we'll drop down. We'll pick this up, we'll continue the loops, we'll drop down, and then we'll come across making uh, bottom connections. This is gonna ultimately be a challenge, and we'll work through that. Okay, so we're gonna use the Flying Dutchman as much, the, the Flying Dutchman technique as much as we can. So because that leg's down on the bottom, what I wanna do, I can do it either way. Just push that through the V. Okay, as you can see where this is at, you wanna take and come up through here. You can go ahead and pull this down here have this at the bottom, pull this down here to where it matches this knot here. Or we can simply, that doesn't even look like it's gonna hold very well. Well, what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and do the, do the first one the way we did it before. This lead line's not allowing me to, to get that knot real tight. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here I'm gonna pull this to the length that I need by pulling it down. Go here. Go right there. Okay, so we've tied that in. Okay, let's go on with the Flying Dutchman. We'll pick that up. Okay. 
Okay, we need a widener in there, right? So let's put the widener. Same way we did when we were making our cast net. Everything's the same. Okay, I can come in here, pull that out. It's gone, we don't need it. We, we already know that we've got it in place. We're going to drop down, do the same thing we did before. Make sure that we roll that over, pull it, pull it down to that knot. Make sure that knot is all on the outside of that knot that we just put in there. Now, we've got this one here. We're going to have to pick it up. Bring it up to the knot. And hold it down with my elbow because that lead line's not enough to hold it in place. Nice and tight. Okay, so as we can see, we tied into that loop right there, that mesh. Now we have to go up. Okay, so instead of flipping the net this time, I'm just going to do it this way so that you can see that how to do this by hand without using the gauge or the flying Dutchman. Okay, so we're there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to eyeball gauge these to about the same length. And remember, there's going to be a knot down here, so it needs to be a hair longer. When we tie the knot, it's going to make it just a little bit longer so that the knot can be tied up in there. Pick up the next mesh. Use this one as a gauge. Try to get these as square as possible. Use this one gauge in this one. Come over. place. Okay, now we're going to drop down to this one on the side. Okay, put the knot over the top of the repair line. Make sure that that is on the end, that knot is on the inside of that knot. It's been pushed on the outside of that where you just tied it off. Now, if we look at this, we see this, we've got to drop down and pick that up. Okay, I want to gauge it about the right length. Put our sheet bin on there. Snug it down. Okay, so now we have to go up, but we need to pay attention to where this goes. Do the next one. Gauge it out. Tight in place. Okay, so as we can see, this spacer, or, or this actually is gonna need to be on top of here. So once I get to here, I'm gonna cut this and I'm going to make a repair because I'm gonna have a leg here and a leg here. I'm gonna tie in here, put the widener, and then end up on the leg. See how our widener is just kind of hanging out? It's supposed to be inside here. Okay, so the widener is supposed to be there, but it's not there. Okay, so we're going to come over here. We're going to get up in here. We're going to tie this in place. Looks to me like we're a little off screen. I'm going to move this up a little bit. Okay, so we're going to come over here. 
and pick this up. The, the uh, widener should be right here directly under this widener and above this widener. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually come in here, we're going to cut, cut, and we're going to have a starting leg and an ending leg right there. It doesn't always work out this way, but this is one of those unique situations where you need to examine it and decide exactly how you're going to approach this. Okay, so that's secured. Let's cut it. Okay, so we're going to go in here and we're going to cut this widener out. We're going to cut here on the leg, cut here on the leg, and it's uh, pretty much a simple, a simple setup here. What we're going to do, put this in here. I'm sorry. It's a simple setup. I cut, I cut it out, and we got a starting leg here and an ending leg here. But we have to put our uh, widener right up in here. So we'll come in here this way. If you decide to skip wideners, you're going to have a problem because you're going to have. Uh, you're going to have more mesh at the bottom than you do at the top. Okay, so now we've done that. And what we need to do is we need to put our widener in here. So let me get this, take some of the slack out of here so you can see it better. Okay, so we've tied on there. We're going to have to go up here and do a widener and then come down here. Okay, so we're going to pull this, pull this so that it's in its correct position. And we need to put this knot in alignment with these knots right here. Okay, so we bring the widener knot down right there. It's a little longer than normal, but and we're gonna snug it down pretty tight. Okay, we're gonna come in here, pick this up. I'm gonna go right here. This is the ending leg. And we're gonna put that in place. Snug it down, okay? So what we've done is we put the widener in there. Sorry about the camera. <laughs> okay, we put the widener in there, we've done the patch, and we've, we've got our widener in place, okay? So now what we'll do is after we've done all of our patching and everything, uh, we'll go ahead and make any other repairs we have to make, and we will dip our net after those repairs. Now, if by chance you had a brand new net and it, it's been double dipped uh, recently and you're like, wow, that's too much dip to be on my net. It's okay. Just get you a paintbrush, put it on a piece of cardboard, get you a paintbrush with your dip on it and just paint it over your patch. Okay, so you need to, you need to protect that patch because that's now part of your net and you need to protect it. Okay, if y'all have any questions about the patching or any confusion, then what I'll do is I'll come back in and make another, another uh, uh, specific patch type or repair type that you might need. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks a lot, guys.